What is up YouTube? Today is going to be so detailed, get your mind thinking, we're going to talk numbers, training, science. No, we're not. We're going to have a Q&A, we're going to sit back, we're going to relax, I'm going to answer some questions that you guys answered on the Snapchat a couple of days ago. I really like these Q&As because it's just me and you, the very person, you get, you get to know what my personality is like and it's very easy for me to make these and they're actually very informative. And whenever someone asks lots of questions, then other people can learn from other people's questions and my answers as well. So I'm going to dive into this, it's very, very uh, simple, I'm going to talk about training, uh, nutrition, different points and opinions I have on GAA. So I got this question a lot and the first one was why did you leave Scottsdale for Dundalk? I answered this question a couple of times um, in my last Q&As and I've said it in the Snapchat why. I used to play for Scottsdale, if anyone doesn't understand, we won championships. I won three minor championships in a row, under 21, cha I got three under 21 championship medals, um, a lot of medals with Scottsdale, but two years ago, uh, Actually, last year was my first year away from Scottsdale because I moved to a club called Dundalk Gales in Louth. And the reason was I have been in college in Dundalk since 2010 and I've been living up here for the last seven years. And I've actually uh, spent most of my time away from home in Louth, in Dundalk uh, for the last seven years. So a lot of commitment regarding college, even though I wasn't passing that much, but I was still living up here. And recently I'm working up here in a company called National Pen as an account manager. So I said, look, I want to change things up. There's no harm in changing club. Um, Loud football is very competitive. It's actually brought my football on over the last year. And I generally think I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now regarding YouTube or anything if I stayed with Scottsdale because I spread my wings kind of loud. But definitely in the future, I'd love to go back to Scottsdale and give it another rattle. Next question is, I want to get bigger for GA and I also want to get faster for athletics. How do you concentrate on one or is it possible to do both? Of course it's possible to do both. Um, my biggest, um, my biggest point of view regarding athletic performance is look at NFL players. They're like six foot five, they're 220 pounds and they are lightning fast, ripped, shredded. So if these guys can do it, why can't GA footballers do it? Obviously the likes of Jim McConley and you know Aiden O'Shea, all these big footballers that people would be afraid of getting too bulky, but they're extremely fit, they're fast, they're strong, they're athletic. So the one thing I would say to do into your training every single week would be plyometrics and what plyometric is it's plyos it's jumping movements so your box jumps your resistant band jumps your um jumps from a flat ground uh, onto a box anything that's working power and explosiveness is going to increase your speed and also you're going to um get bigger for GEA by having the nutrition and just basically working on your plyometric movements. And if you don't know what plyometric movements are, I am going to do a video in the next week or so regarding plyometrics. I'll probably wait until there's a good weather uh, in Ireland, which is basically never, and I'll go on the pitch and I'll show you some movements you can do once or twice a week. The thing about plyometrics is you can't do it uh, every single day because it is very tough on your body. Would you play for Louth if you got the call up? Um, if you asked me about five months ago, uh, would I play for Louth? 100% definitely would have been all up for it. Right now, if I got a call for Louth, no. I um, For a reason that I'm not going to say just yet, then I wouldn't be able to take the call up for Louth. Next question, on a day you're going on the pints, will you take creatine and BCAs and protein shake even if you aren't going to get a session in? This might seem like a piss take, but it's actually serious because when I was younger, we're Irish, we're Irish culture, we all drink. I say 99% of my viewers would drink alcohol, it's GEA, it's in our culture. So when you're drinking pints, the most important thing I've talked about this for is nutrition. I don't take any creatine, I don't take any BCAs, I don't take any protein shakes whenever I'm going drinking that night. The most important thing is I keep my carbs and fats lower and this has nothing to do with creatine or BCAs. And as long as I hit my protein goal that day, then I should be okay. I like to get a session in that morning, but creating the BCAs is not something that I would definitely take on the day. You can if you want, but it's not going to make any difference. What sort of work in the gym is the Monaghan senior footballers doing over the last two years? And because they've all got bigger in size, a lot, especially the two Qs. Well, Kieran and Darren Qs, I would have played with for the last, like, what, eight years with Scottsdale. Um, whenever I was coming into the panel about 17, I actually looked up to the two Qs because they were the, Darren was obviously the, the big thing in Scottsdale at the time, and then Kieran was the next up and coming. So, especially, um, 
I wouldn't say it's the county team that's really pushing them all. I think a lot of club teams that are all doing gym work, you know, anyone in any senior division, even intermediate, are all doing gym works uh, twice a week. I know whenever we were training for Scottsdale, we were doing gym work three or four times a week, six o'clock in the morning before lads went to work. And I used to come home from the nightclub uh, at about five o'clock, not out, we used to work in a nightclub, and I used to pop into the gym, and we used to get a workout in. So it's not necessary just because county level, senior, uh, club level, or definitely doing gym work as well. Uh, a lot of size, a lot of county teams have nutritionists, um, back maybe 10 years ago a lot of county teams wouldn't have any uh, knowledge in nutrition but I think a lot of people have uh, expanded their knowledge even with the likes of YouTube and social media getting bigger and there's more and more good information out there then people are getting a lot more information regarding nutrition so that's why I think a lot of bees, a lot of boys are getting uh, bigger. What simple things could you cut out of your diet or what simple actual things could you do to get lean for summer when you're doing GA training a couple and gym a couple of days a week? A couple of simple things is like your calories is gonna make everything. If you wanna lean down for summer, you're gonna have to be in a deficit or you're gonna be around maintenance and also doing a lot of cardio. A simple things like instead of drinking milk or full fat milk, swap it up with almond milk. Almond milk has got like a lot less calories than, than full fat milk and Couple of cut your portion sizes down, and you will be very surprised whenever you start tracking the grams or the weight of your rice, your pa pasta, especially. Oh my god, like whenever I used to eat pasta, I would just throw it on the pot, wouldn't even look at the weight, and it's absolutely crazy how little like 100 grams of pasta is when there's like 500 calories. I remember every Sunday night I used to go back to college and my mother would massive lunchbox of pasta I'll never forget it and I'm just looking back now I was literally eating like 3,000 calories a day and I thought I was eating healthy because I was eating pasta pasta is so high in calories now it's a great bulking food if you're looking to put on muscle and mass and loads of energy for football and um, if you're someone that's skinny trying to bulk up like a lot of uh, players do be asking me but if you're someone like me that's a little bit heavy whenever they're younger then I don't even eat pasta anymore, but I'd probably eat pasta if it was going on a heavy bulk, but not anymore at the minute because summer's only around the corner. So weigh out your food and just cut your portion sizes and like change little things like milk to animal milk. Just kind of cut your calories and get a feel how many calories is in each uh, product of food. Have you ever played county in either underage or senior? What tips would you give for students sitting exams? I'll answer the first one. Uh, county level, there's no development squads when we were younger, so we'll have played with them. Uh, but I wouldn't really recommend. I wouldn't really say that's county level until, until, uh, obviously minor level. It was never a county minor. Did trials for county under 21s, but then back then I was a bit of a fucking bit of a didn't take in really that serious so I didn't play any county level at all in my underage apart from the development squads. What tips would you give for students sitting exams? Um, prioritise the exams first. The next thing that probably uh, would have helped me and um, would have been the fish oils. I would have supplemented with fish oils a lot. Uh, my mother used to put fish oils omega trees uh, with every meal. Um, back then I had no knowledge of nutrition, but it actually makes a lot of sense now that people take uh, fish oils and omega trees whenever they're studying because it focuses more on concentration. Um, probably take more caffeine, good sources of caffeine, um, maybe like an hour before your exam to give you an extra bit of focus. Favourite GA player, past and present? Wow. Right now, we all love Jim O'Connolly. I think Jim O'Connolly's class. I'm really, really liking Kieran Kilkenny. A big fan of his because he plays in the position of mine and he gets around the pitch and he's very athletic um, like him and Ryan Q right now plays the middle third extremely well but I favour Kieran Kilkenny because he's more athletic looking uh, past uh, probably just I don't know if you're just saying this because he's a mate of mine is Usher McConville I would have watched him a lot back in the day and I'll never forget the goal he scored in 2002 as well Favourite position? My favourite position is um, probably in the half forward line or the half back line. Uh, I think it depends because whenever you play in the half back line, when the ball breaks down in the midfield, you're actually facing 
the way you want but if the ball breaks down you're half forward you have to like turn and swivel and I think there's more pressure on you to score whenever you're playing number 10 or 12 than it is whenever you're 5 and 7 and I think 5 and 7 now it is you can attack more instead of 10 and 12 whenever you play 10 and 12 you actually have to run back and kind of get on the other side of the midfield whereas the 5 and 7 can loop around so I don't know that's my that's my take on it who do you look up as a GA player and what we play and that plays your position? As I said, Ryan McHugh, A. Kieran Kenny are the big dogs at the minute in the middle third. How do you gain muscle for GA while still trying to stay lean? Uh, eat in a calorie maintenance, which is find how many calories it takes for you to eat each day without gaining weight. You can do that by Googling if there's a calorie calculator or you can just do it by uh, going eat doing a food diary for a week and you'll see how many calories you're eating each day and then you can work around that if you want to lose weight or build muscle. I would use a stay in a maintenance and or a very small surplus like one to two hundred calories uh, over maintenance which is going to allow you to build muscle while not putting on too much fat. Okay what, what position you Okay, so next question is, what shoes or runners do you wear in the gym? So I'm getting this asked a lot because a lot of videos I'm putting up on Instagram are me either wearing Converse or wearing um, nothing at all bare feet. So the reason for this, the best runners, the best footwear you need to be wearing for legs and squats and deadlifts is the Addy Powers, they're weightlifting shoes, but they can be pretty pricey. So if you're like me, the next best thing is a pair of Converse. Now the best pair of Converse you can get is the ones with the high tops, which is ankle support. Now you wanna find uh, shoe that is completely flat base. Don't be squatting in your Nikes. Don't be squatting in your your fancy um, Nike rushes. You want to be either doing it in bare feet. Give bare feet a go if you've no Converse or no uh, lifting shoes, and that will give you the support. Because if you're lifting in like Nike rushes or whatever, then you're going to be basically squatting on a mattress, and it's not going to be good at all. What? What should you do more or less of to get abs on show? Okay, so I personally think that working your abs is a waste of time. Now, okay, so working your abs is a waste of time because you can only see your abs if your body fat is low enough. Now, when you're bulking, which means you're trying to build muscle, your abs are the same as any other muscle group. So you want to be doing resistance on it. The best ab routines is ones that you can use dumbbells or you can use um, weights to progress over time on your ab workouts. But whenever you're trying to cut weight, just focus on cutting weight and your, your abs will show. And the last two parts of the lower abs are always the last to show. It is just genetics. It's the same with females. Females always trying to lose weight on their hips last. It's the same as male, it's always the lower abs. So if you stay in a deficit for long enough, trust me, your lower abs will show and just the rest of your abs. So I wouldn't work I wouldn't worry about the workouts. Uh, worry about the workouts maybe if you're trying to do a lean bulk and you're trying to progress in your ab routines by using weights and resistance. How can you improve your mobility for GEA? And um, mobility workouts is something that a lot of people don't do, a lot of teenagers definitely don't do and a lot of people don't warm up. I've only really started to warm up over the last couple of months because I've found how important it is. I'm doing leg sessions maybe twice to three times a week and I'm also doing football sessions so I am getting tight. Uh, thankfully I'm very, very, very mobile because I used to do karate, I used to do tang su do. I was a couple of belts away from a black belt when I was younger. so. I'm very, very mobile in that, but I know a lot of people are not as mobile as me, but check out this app, okay? This app is brilliant, and it was shown to me by Aaron Smith, Mr. Fly, so check out his stuff, and it's called Nike Plus Training. So that's what it is there, and it has like all these different mobility workouts you can search like for lower stuff, it's great. I'll put it in the low, I'll put, if you wanna know what it is, just ask me, it's great for mobility. It's like 15 minutes before you do your workout and it shows you exactly what mobility exercises to do. Next question is, getting too big from the gym, overall volume and mass, need to lose five or six fat and be about 11% body fat. Uh, so we're gonna cut, but I can't afford to put any more size. Yeah, so basically all you gotta do is cut down your, 
get their nutrition correct, get yourself in a deficit, throw in some cardio there. Majority of people that play football don't need to do too much cardio because they're doing cardio already trained in matches and at this time of the year a lot of people are training at least three times a week just in GA. So there's no need to go on the bike or do heavy training on the on the uh, cardio side of things whenever you're going to the gym. Just focus on your nutrition. If you can stay in a deficit and you're still doing football training, you will lose weight and that's really all you want to be doing and if you want to cut some muscle then try and lower your protein goal and allow your body to cut into your muscle to uh, break down some of that for energy but majority of the lot of people want to keep their muscle so uh, try and focus on having your BCAs and creatine and keeping your lifts up in the gym while still losing fat. Uh, should you be sore the next day after workout if you're a beginner and you let's say work out legs for the first time and you go high volume and you do a lot of squats a lot of deadlifts leg press leg extension leg curl then you are going to be sore the next day these are called DOMS which is delayed onset muscle soreness you will probably be sore like the day after and even the second day after so how to get over that is by doing the workouts more and more often the more times you do it and the more times your muscle gets more uh, so would taking creatine before training or a match benefit you no because creatine is basically used for whenever you're trying to lose fat and you're trying to keep your muscle in the workout so it won't have any effect really on your training and what will affect it is beta alanine it's a supplement i've been using over the last couple of months especially whenever i was doing my boxing fight and it's something that you should probably invest in if your fitness is already at a high level I weight train three times a week, but I want to keep fit with regard to being able to run 5Ks. So would you recommend extra running sessions? Um, test yourself, do 5Ks, test yourself, do timed uh, laps. So get yourself on the road, run a 5K, test yourself, run the same 5K the following week and just get better and better in progress. The only way that you're going to get fitter is by your cardiovascular uh, fitness improving. What I like to do for to get fitter for GA is I want to monitor my heart rate. Uh, so whenever I'm working for on the bike, let's say two minutes on, one minute off, for the two minutes I want to keep my heart rate 90% the whole time so it's about over 170 okay so i've done loads of videos on this this is very important to me because this is exactly what i'm looking for athletic performance i want to be extremely fit just because i go to the gym and um, you, you want to be strong but you want to be the fitter faster a uh, stronger version of yourself what are the best core exercises in your opinion i've talked to this before the best core exercise is being at a lower percent body fat so you can see your abs If you haven't, is it healthy to drink energy drinks such as Monster? The amount of times Monster comes up on my channel is crazy while training heavily and much in the same coffee. Right, so how much is too much caffeine? Um, I was actually researching this. There's a really good website called examine.com. I'll put it up on the screen. And we're talking about caffeine and what is the recommended dose for each day and what does caffeine do? Caffeine is definitely the most researched uh, stimulant in the world. Caffeine is scientifically uh, proven that it does improve your focus, it improves your performance if used wisely and if used in the correct way. The reason I drink Monster is because whenever I'm in a deficit, let's say I'm at 400 calories, the reason it's called in a deficit because you're not in a maintenance, which means you don't have enough calories to get through the day as you would whenever you're having a maintenance, trying to cut back. It's so I like to take a white can of Monster, a zero calorie Monster because it won't affect my weight. Now there is 150 milligrams of caffeine in Monster and it will help you get through a workout and it will help your focus. But I only like to take it once to twice a week regarding my uh, training, okay? You won't see me drink it every day because that's not good for your system. I would never recommend anybody to take Monster every single day, but in moderation, it is not gonna do anything to your body or your performance. Same as a coffee, a lot of people take coffee every single morning and they become intolerant to it and the caffeine doesn't work as best so what I would do if you don't take any caffeine start slow take like a, an espresso or a coffee maybe an hour before training see what it's like whenever it kicks in uh, for the match uh, so it will also kick in harder in the morning time whenever you don't have any food in your system so like I see on a Saturday or Sunday morning there's nothing better than legs on a Saturday morning and going for a coffee but 45 minutes before the workout a good strong coffee and I'm telling you it will kick in and you will be listening to tunes and popping around that gym like nobody else how can you improve your jump for GEA like when you jump for a chick chick out 
when you jump for a check out, when you jump for a kick out, so basically what you want to do is apply metrics. Apply metrics again, box jumps, and you want to focus having resistance. A good thing, I must do a video on this whenever there's good weather outside, that someone grabs a band, and pulls you back resistance, and you're jumping up, and you're also jumping forward. I'll do a video on it, but look up plyometrics, that will um, improve your jump. So that's all the questions I have been, I asked loads, I think this video went on for like 20 minutes, so I'm going to cut it now, I don't want to just keep this on too long. Um, I love these Q&As because it's just me and you and it gets more inform, inform, information out for more people, so give the video a like. If you learned something, write something underneath if you want me to answer it in the comment section as well. Give it a dislike or even write why you didn't like it or maybe you don't believe in anything I say. But everything I say is scientifically proven and it's a science based approach to GEA regarding nutrition training. And it's just all my own opinion. So yeah, I'm going to do an uh, inter-county meet up with someone next week. Um, you have known him before. I haven't had him on my channel, but I have met him before. He's a good friend of mine. So we're going to do free kicks and we're going to do penalties. Might also grab a goalkeeper, an county goalkeeper, and have a bit of a laugh. So I think he's enjoyed them after the Iron Cairn workout and also the Ron O'Neill Q&A. Uh, big things happening, not this weekend, but next weekend. And then even after that, I am going to be doing something else. So thank you for watching. Racy out of here. Love you all.